You know, I really thought the last video was gonna be the last one with this background. I'll go home eventually. All right, so Jurassic World Dominion. A movie that I've been dreading for years. Every time a little ad would pop up, every time Universal emailed me saying that there was a new trailer or a teaser, every big trailer trying to rope me in with the original characters, I became filled with dread and misery. And that's because as some of you may remember, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom fundamentally broke something in my brain. I'll never fully understand it, I'll never get that back. It might sound like an exaggeration to you, but no, I despise that movie on every conceivable level. If I had ever had something positive to say about it, it's gone. I forgot it. All I remember is the misery. I realized that my video about Fallen Kingdom was essentially an unhinged rant, but it was an accurate representation of my emotions towards that movie. You guys cheered when I did it about cats in about 365 days, but I say one thing about the dinosaurs and suddenly I'm too emotional. But you know what? I've never claimed to be otherwise. But at least I felt vindicated when the general critical and public consensus of that movie was that it was ass. And just to clarify, I am a huge Jurassic Park fan. It's one of my favorite movies. The books are two of my favorite books. It's why I have like that hardcover edition that's like fully visible in the back of my setup. I bought a 3D printed raptor claw from my friend and I even like Jurassic Park 3. So I'm really just trying to establish that after the last movie, my expectations for this one were subterranean. Honestly, we're at core of the earth and thankfully that means it could really only go up uh, unless it went into like, I've now imploded in the core and am dead. Uh, it doesn't significantly go up, but I've somehow ended up with some generally positive feelings towards this movie. And I'll elaborate on all that, but what is the general story idea behind Jurassic World Dominion? But I feel like I need to do a quick rundown on what happened in Fallen Kingdom around the human clone stuff. So my personal men is Colin Trevorrow decided that the thing Jurassic Park really needed was for John Hammond to have had a silent partner, Benjamin Lockwood who apparently became obsessed with the idea of human cloning after his daughter died, and of all the wacky shit that John Hammond was on board for, human cloning is where he drew the line and the two split off. Apparently human cloning is exactly where he spares the expense. So that's how we got Maisie, but she's about to become a hell of a lot more confusing. There was also the general belief that the Indoraptor they created for the last movie had some human DNA in it, and that they were gonna be steering further into that direction with this movie. Thankfully, that is not the direction they went for it in this movie, bless all that is good in this world. So after watching a bunch of dinosaurs tragically burn to death on an island, which I am still pissed off about, I didn't need to see that. And I especially did not need to see the dino dying on the dock. Jesus, fuck. Sorry, I will chill. You just don't understand. You don't understand what that movie did to me. But the dinosaurs they saved got taken to Lockwood's estate, which is where there's suddenly an underground dinosaur black market auction. So where we left off, Clone Kid released all the dinos into society so they wouldn't die. And they've now made their ways to various aspects of the world. There's black market dino trades, poachers, sport hunting. So the world is trying to decide what to do with them. Kill them, live with them, try to round them up for sanctuaries. But that's not the focus of this movie, that would be too easy. Maisie and Blue's little baby raptor get kidnapped by poachers and shipped off, so Owen and Claire head out on an international journey to track them down. And the OG gang that they're bringing back are conveniently located in the same spot that Owen and Claire are headed because they're trying to uncover some information about a giant crop destroying locusts. The dinosaurs are just kind of around just vibing, and honestly, I will take that compared to what Fallen Kingdom did to them. And after an international journey to save their clone kid in an immaculate conception raptor, I bet the gang was just itching for a good night's sleep, which is why they should turn to today's sponsor, Birch. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company making products that are stylish, comfortable, and made with non-toxic, organic, and natural materials that are all sustainably sourced so they're better for you and the environment. I've been away from home for about a month now and the thing I am most excited to get back to is my mattress, my back, she is screaming. On top of great lumbar support, Birch mattresses are made with cooling and breathability in mind with increased airflow for your comfort. Birch also uses hypoallergenic wool, which is both mildew and allergen resistant. And on top of being good for me, they're good for the environment. Birch makes sure that the materials they use are produced and harvested sustainably. For example, the wool they use is sourced from New Zealand farms that are wool integrity NZ compliant. Sleep is one of the things I value most because it directly affects how well I'm able to work and 
enjoy life. My last mattress always got too hot while I was sleeping and then I'd wake up with back pain due to lack of support, so I just never felt rested. With Birch, my sleeping temperature is a lot more regulated and I wake up feeling good because I wasn't just constantly sinking deeper and deeper into the mattress while I was sleeping. Now a mattress is obviously a massive commitment. You spend so much of your time sleeping, it directly affects your well-being. And that's why Birch offers a 100 night sleep trial and a 25 year warranty. If you're not completely satisfied with it, they come right to your door to pick it up, issue a refund, no hassle. And if you like free stuff, and obviously you do, it's free stuff. Each mattress comes with two of their Eco Rest pillows delivered right to your door. They're made with recycled plastic bottles and still feel plush and cozy. It's amazing. And if you're in the US, all this is delivered right to your door for free. So if you're looking for a new mattress and wanna find out why I love my Birch so much, make sure to click the link in the description down below or head on over to birchliving.com slash Jedi to save $400 off your mattress purchase plus two free pillows. So in my opinion may seem generally positive, almost everyone else is shitting on it. My show only had 13 people in it and three of those people walked out within the first hour and then another couple in front of me took a nice little break to look at someone's baby pictures on Facebook. And that's because the first hour-ish of this movie is pretty slow. I will be fair and say that I saw it at 4 p.m. on a Thursday in a showtime that they added after the tickets had originally gone live, but even when I checked the times later in the evening, none of the showings were close to being sold out. But I do feel like once the story starts to pick up, after a good 40 minutes, it turns into a pretty decent popcorn flick. However, if you do start to think about it a little bit too much, which we are gonna do here today, cause I can't help myself, it will start to go out the window. But it never descends to the level of brain breakingly stupid that Fallen Kingdom does. No, I will not stop taking pot shots at that movie. In fact, I almost have to continue bitching about Fallen Kingdom to explain why, no, this one is in fact not that bad. Except for like one aspect that does get a lot more stupid uh, again, it's not great, but it's better uh, to me. A, a lot of my friends seem to disagree. Now the first 30 minutes of this did depress me pretty heavily. Uh, like I was personally just expecting to laugh at how bad it was uh, based on the general vibe I was seeing about it online. Uh, but something in those 30 minutes just felt terribly wrong to me. And I do think some of that is me. Something about the dinosaurs trying to integrate with the rest of the world just makes me feel bad. So watching Apatosauruses walk through construction zones lost in time fucking bums me out, dude. Making their sad ooh, -ooh noises, it makes me think of like Littlefoot's mom dead in a valley. So I don't get this feeling of some kind of like beautiful force of nature integrating in society. It just feels wrong. So very suddenly I was concerned that this experience wasn't gonna be hilariously bad because I was no longer emotionally invested in where it was going or even rage inducing. I was worried that it was going to leave me feeling bad and sad. But thankfully once it kicks into the action, the depression mostly left outside of a few moments and I just enjoyed the parkour raptors we'll get there. Now, originally I was upset that they were dragging the OG cast into this bullshit human dinosaur clone hybrid insanity it seemed like it was going in and thought that they were just gonna be used as cheap cameos to prop up the Jurassic World cast, but thankfully they, they actually gave them something to do. They have their entire own side story. Their mission is completely independent of the Jurassic World crew. They obviously just get mingled together at the end. Uh, their mission has nothing to do with dinosaurs, but that's okay. And I think the reason why the OG cast ended up working for me, even though it was clearly nostalgia bait, is because of the Jurassic World cast are largely so bland and often unlikable that the charm and charisma that the original cast bring with them is just leaps and bounds better than being trapped with Claire and Owen the entire time. Which is impressive because a lack of on-screen charm is never a complaint I have about Chris Pratt in any other scenario, but oh God. So the movie essentially has two separate plots running at the same time, maybe an abandoned third and then just finds a way to smash them together. We do get this new pilot character though. She seems really cool, but I just can't get over the fact that it feels like she should be in a Star Wars movie. Down for it though. So what makes Dominion instantly better to me? For one, no military contracts. Yes, there are some trained attack dinos, but there isn't a separate plot with the military thinking that it's a good idea to have barely listening dinosaurs in a modern warfare situation when we have drones. And while they do start messing with that human clone storyline with an explanation that's even more batshit than it was originally. It doesn't mingle in with the dinosaurs and has a semi-logical solution to the central conflict of the movie. Logistically, I don't think it was necessary, but sure, I'll give it to you. It's sci-fi. You introduced a lot of things. You got to find a way to tie in. Would it make sense for human cloning to build out of dinosaur cloning? Yes. Did we need it in these movies? I, no. 
No. Then as it's winding into its conclusion, it's gonna start feeling very familiar. It has a lot of the same beats as the original Jurassic Park, and the overall plot really just comes down to science company does thing for money, causes disaster, main characters try to make it out alive. And this time, that science company is Biosyn, meaning that Lewis Dodson has returned. Dodson. Dodson, we've got Dodson here. New actor though, because apparently the original Dodson actor was arrested for uh, a word I can't say lest YouTube strike me down um, involving a minor. This is not the way I thought I would ever find that out. I don't think it's ever directly mentioned, but Biosyn is the company that hires Nedry to get the dino samples from InGen. But now publicly Biosyn's provided a sanctuary for the dinosaurs to live in safe from poachers and the rest of humanity. But behind the scenes, they're being pretty extra to put it lightly. It's 100% something I could see a massive corporation doing and then getting out of hand. I'll get into details in a bit, but the movie is essentially building towards this message that we all need to work together to save ourselves and the planet lest we go the way of the dinosaur. Except those are back too. And even if the dinosaurs are just kind of like bookends on this movie looming in the background like zombies in a particularly human focused episode of Walking Dead, but cooler. I'm personally okay with that because I just didn't want to watch another movie where dinosaurs are just suffering the entire time. So now it's time to break down this new less stinky stinker with spoilers. So as mentioned, this movie starts off with the question of like, what are we going to do with the dinosaurs? We've got like a mosasaur attacking fishermen in Alaska, people getting chomped down on sidewalks. It's just, a, it's a little chaotic right now. Except that is not remotely the conflict we're working with. We got giant locusts. Claire is busting dinos out of illegal breeding facilities and Owen is a fucking dinosaur or a cowboy, which I just frankly can't get over. Literally chasing down Parasaurolophus on horseback with his cowboy gang behind him. If the movie had started with this scene, I would have been positive that society had completely collapsed as a result of the dinosaurs like somehow spreading worldwide and we're back to the fucking wild west. But he's doing this to catch them and send them off to sanctuaries to be safe from poachers. But I just want to know how a single lasso stopped this thing. How did it not just drag him off his horse? But sure. He and Claire are officially together and they're taking care of Maisie as their own in the woods, which is where the poachers have been stalking and nab Maisie and Beta. We will later find out that uh, this is essentially a Jesus Raptor. Blue conceived Beta as Maisie named her completely of her own body because part of her genes were filled in with monitor lizard DNA uh, and they've been known to reproduce without a male. So immaculate conception Raptor, just like the meme. And thankfully Claire's old pal Franklin now works at the CIA in some kind of like dino department so he figures out who kidnapped Maisie and how to track him down. So now we get to set up the classic cast. After a massive swarm of giant locusts attack some kids and wipe out an entire field, Ellie Sattler is invited out to investigate. Apparently these locusts have been spreading rapidly, destroying crops, but they're leaving any crops that use biosyn seed alone. Hmm, suspicious. I wonder what could be going on here. And if you want to say that the government was in on it for like financial purposes, I, that really doesn't seem to be the case. So Ellie obviously realizes is what's happening, but she needs to get proof and she's conveniently been invited to the Biosyn Sanctuary and Research Facility by Ian Malcolm, who is now apparently like their in-house lecturer. So she wants to go in there, find proof that they've created these locusts, but in order to provide some credibility to what she's doing, she wants to bring Alan Grant in because of how popular he is. And it's pretty shoddy, like I do think the government would have looked at Biosyn by now, but sure, you need the paleontologist to lend you some credibility. More like this movie needed Sam Neill to lend it some credibility. Though this is right about when we started getting the walkouts, so not even nostalgia could keep people in their seats. I know we've been talking about walkouts a lot lately, but where I live, walkouts are not common at all. I never really see people leave movies. I was just at a film festival that has a very different vibe. This was unusual. And on top of their very shady dealings and the dinosaur sanctuary, uh, Biosyn also wants to use a lot of like the genetic research they've done with the dinosaurs to shift that over to helping humans with things like Alzheimer's and cancer. This is also where I wonder if there's something going on with Dodson, why he might also be interested in more research in a certain area, because there's this like big deal about him always needing food and he's like always snacking on things, but it doesn't end up going anywhere. So Ellie and Grant finally meet up with Malcolm, who apparently knows all about the locust, which is specifically why he invited Ellie. So the gang's all on the same side. And who designed these weaponized prehistoric locusts for Biosyn? Dr. Henry fucking 
Wu because it's always Dr. Henry Wu. How many times is this man gonna fuck with shit? At least this time he has the self-respect to look like a broken man for what he's done. You'd think he'd learn by the third company he's worked for trying to mess with genetics, but I guess you just gotta get your coin. Thankfully, he realizes that these locusts are out of control. They're causing way too much destruction. They're reproducing rapidly. It's gonna shut down the food supply. So he wants to kill them, but it's where Dodson comes in with the banger fucking advice of when we're afraid, we follow through. Yeah, I don't know, man. You got locusts literally destroying the worldwide food chain. But they are also obviously the people who wanted Clone Girl and Baby Beta Raptor Jesus, except for seemingly very different reasons, which we'll get to. So in their attempts to find Maisie, Owen and Claire end up in Malta, which is apparently where a massive underground dinosaur black market is. But it finally opens up for some action with laser pointer attack atrociraptors. Yeah, you point a laser on someone's back, they hunt them down for life. It's dumb as fuck, but finally something's happening. We got them jumping around on rooftops, some literal dino parkour, and I'll take it. A bunch of the dinosaurs end up released in the black market. Owen tries doing his fucking like dino hand thing to an Allosaurus and Carnotaurus as if they weren't gonna just like nip those things off. There's also a scene here when the poacher is having both of his arms eaten off of his body and still managing to answer Owen's questions. Very impressive. And this this is where the new pilot character that I like, Kayla, saves Claire because she feels guilty that she didn't do anything when she saw Maisie being smuggled off. And no Jurassic World movie would be complete without Owen on a motorcycle. So we get a big epic chase scene of him making a getaway from the Atrociraptors just in time to jump onto the cargo plane and off the three head to Biosyn. Also, we see a dinosaur kill a dude on one of those like pay to go scooters. So I feel like the creators have made their feelings known about those. But it's finally time for you guys to figure out how the human clone thing got even worse. So Dr. Wu tells Maisie that the reason why Biosyn was trying to track her and Beta Baby Blue down was so they could better understand her. And as mentioned, Beta was just spontaneously birthed from Blue because of the monitor lizard DNA. So it turns out that Maisie wasn't a clone that Lockwood created after the death of his daughter. Charlotte was also apparently a scientific genius and made Maisie herself. Which is where we now get some like conflicting descriptions. So at first I was like, okay, she made a clone of herself and implanted it back in to give birth. That makes sense. It's a massively confusing ethical violation. Like why would, is that the way you decided you wanted to have a kid? And also why would you do that without the intention of sharing the results? But then the way Dr. Wu words something, it makes it sound like Charlotte just spontaneously became pregnant with an exact copy of herself. He says, just like Blue, Charlotte was able to have a child all by herself. She created you with her own DNA. So there's two ways you can take that. She just created her spontaneously, or she used her own DNA to create the clone, put it back in. I think that's what it ends up being, but there's a strong moment where I was like, wait a second, did are they trying to say she cloned herself in utero? Because later on it's implied that even though if it was her making a clone and planting it in herself, it would have been a science experiment. It is clarified that Charlotte didn't see it as an experiment. She just really wanted a kid. And apparently this was the way she wanted to do it. It's really just best not to think about the logistics too much. But in either of those scenarios, Wu understanding Beta better won't help him understand Maisie at all unless Charlotte was pulling some kind of like Dr. Connor shit and infusing her DNA with monitor lizards. Also, you think they would have ended up studying the shit out of this entire process that Charlotte went through and that she would have had her own research that they'd have access to. It just seems like this was a cheap way to have Blue tied into the story somehow. But the bigger reason that she's a genius genius outside of potentially making a clone entirely of herself is that Charlotte realized she had a genetic disorder, which is what actually killed her and would have gone on to kill Maisie. So she managed to change Maisie's DNA, altered every single cell after birth to eradicate the disorder. Something that Wu's never been able to replicate, even though you would assume that Charlotte would want this literal life-saving research available to the public, at least after she was dead and there's nothing that anyone could do to her legally anymore. They keep talking up how much she wanted to change the world with this genetics research and like the biggest thing she could have done no one knows how she did it. But if he can study Maisie to figure out how it was done, he can make an alteration to the locusts and kill them off in one generation. But like theoretically, 
They should be able to do that with existing research. But I get it, they've introduced this insanity, they have to do something with it. And I feel like Dodson would have been interested in this information because as mentioned, the other side of the company is pharmaceuticals, so they could use whatever Charlotte came up with to correct for a variety of diseases and disorders. Either way, Ellie and Alan get their sample. I'm pretty sure this Ramsey guy is in on it because he makes it like very obvious that like they shouldn't be going to the sub levels as to be like, the sublevels are accessed that way. And yes, it is later revealed that he's the one who told Malcolm about what was going on with the locusts. But while they're getting the sample, Maisie frees Beta, which sets off all the alarms. So when Dodson goes to check on the locusts, he obviously sees Ellie and Alan there, so they're busted. Though I don't know why they wouldn't have just instantly uploaded a video showing the locust stuff inside Biosyn so that even if they didn't make it out, something would be there for people to see. We're genetically modifying diseases out of people, but social media is just too much to tackle. And this is where they run into Maisie because they just couldn't help themselves. They have to create a deeper connection where Ellie actually knew Charlotte. They actually became really good friends after Hammond's death. And that's how she knows that Charlotte never saw Maisie as a science experiment, which means that she was actually trusted with the information that Maisie was a clone, I guess. So at this point, I am just gonna go with weird genetic experimentation resulting in a clone exclusively made with her own DNA, implanted to be birthed, but out of love and not scientific pursuit. By now, Owen and Claire are almost at the comp Compound, but Dodgson disables the aerial defense program because he knows they're coming to try to get Maisie, which results in the plane getting attacked by a Quetzalcoatlus. And the one eject seat parachute they have gets used on Claire because Owen says she has the best chance of finding Maisie because she's her mom. Really? The former bureaucrat has a better chance wandering through dinosaur infested woods and breaking into a secure compound than a former Navy man literally trained to deal with carnivorous dinosaurs? Just say you want to give her a higher chance at survival than the plane crash and be done with it. Obviously the plane crash kills no one. Claire definitely avoids death from a Therizinosaurus with his Slenderman sloth claws. It's a pretty tense scene, has some really cool imagery. I really like stuff like this in Jurassic Park movies. I think this one is blind because its eyes seem super cloudy and it really doesn't seem to see Claire. But it also just violently sideswipes this deer to death for no apparent reason because they're plant eaters. Guess it's just super aggro. Owen and Kayla then get to deal with a pyroraptor that literally follows Owen into ice water, but I'll allow it. Very cool scene, very cool dinosaur, a lot of great contrast with its feathers and the snow. And as mentioned, I really enjoy this Kayla character, though I'm already seeing a bunch of queer baiting comments from people because when talking about Claire, she's like, I get it. I like redheads too. But I'll allow it because that is a great team member to have. So just before Claire is about to be taken out by a Dilophosaurus, Owen and Kayla save her and they go to find their way into the facility. Where Dodson now knows that Malcolm helped Ellie and Grant get evidence of his global terrorism. So they seem to set Ellie and Grant up in a situation where they might end up dying while planning to escort Malcolm off the island. But because Ramsey's in on it, he just lets Malcolm go to save them. This is also where Malcolm makes the statement that people are being exploited by their insurance enchantment with dinosaurs, which is honestly just kind of how this franchise feels now. GG. The speech is really just more about Dodson exploiting people and racing towards extinction out of greed and obviously how that parallels with the world. But the OG gangs back together who then run into Claire, Kayla, and Owen as they are being pummeled by flaming locusts falling from the sky because Dodson's now officially trying to destroy and burn evidence and the giant flaming bastards break out of the ceiling. I assume they would have had some kind of gas, but Oh well, too late now. So this is where we start getting a lot of like heavy parallels to the original Jurassic Park. The gang gets stopped by a Giganotosaurus and we get a repeat of Don't, don't move. Don't move. Though they then end up just moving. It's great. The Jeep they were in gets flipped upside down with the Giganaut looking in through the windows. Then Malcolm uses a flaming locust on a stick to distract it, just like with the flare. But this time he actually spears it in the mouth instead of running. So he's learning. So once again, forest on fire, dinosaurs are upset and might start dying. Like how many fucking times are you gonna make me watch this shit? I don't wanna see dinosaurs burning to death, making sad ooh, -ooh noises. But thankfully Dodson actually cares about the dinosaurs and uses their like brain commands to pull them all inside the facility in their backup containments while they evacuate all the employees. He then packs up some sentimental and incriminating items from his office and one is the Barbasol can that he gave Nedry all those years back to steal the dino DNA samples. And I just need to know, how in the fuck does he have it? That got buried in a ton of mud on Isla Nublar after Nedry got killed. Anything for a sponsor, Ty, and I guess. Yes, but 
I get it. Apparently in one of the games that isn't canon anymore, two Biosyn employees go in after Nedry doesn't show up and find it. So obviously it's a similar process here. Like it's not impossible. It just seems really unlikely, but I'm also okay with that. Barbasol can, it, it's, it's cool. But Dodson's already planning his next venture and wants to take Ramsey with him, who obviously reveals that he's been working against him for months now, though it feels like there is an aspect of their relationship that is missing from this movie. Something between them, the fact that he's eating all these bars, there's, I feel like there's something there that we're not getting. So now it's really just a mission to get off the island, just like in Jurassic Park. And to do this, they need to turn the aerial defense system back on so they can fly off the island and they need to save baby Beta Blue because Owen promised. I made a promise we would bring her home. You made a promise to a dinosaur. Yeah, what? But to do this, they need to reboot the power system because it's an emergency mode just like in Jurassic Park. So Malcolm and Ramsey are guiding them through with the schematics, just like in Jurassic Park. So when the power goes, Dodson's escape train stops too, where when he tries to leave, he gets attacked by a group of Dilophosaurus, drops the Barbasol can, and dies, just like Nedry in Jurassic Park. Cursed can, never buy Barbasol, a Dilophosaurus is gonna kill you and they multiply every time. So back with the gang, Wu hobbles out and says that he can fix everything with the locust. And Malcolm says what we've all been thinking, why is it always him? But obviously they can't just make their way out nice and easy now that the defense system's back on. The Giganotosaurus and T-Rex show up when we get a literal Let them fight moment. And just when it looks like the T-Rex is out and they're barely gonna be able to make it away from the Giganotosaurus, the Therizinosaurus shows up to get in on the action. For some reason, I guess the dinos are just sick of the Giga thinking he's like the Giga Chad of the woods and they combo lay him out. Again, very weird. This is like a foliage eating dinosaur that's now like, I'll fuck you up. I'm gonna fucking skewer you on my fingers. So everyone makes it out safe. Ellie and Grant finally admit their feelings for each other. Grant goes with her and Ramsey to present the evidence against Biosyn. Wu figures out the emergency solution and releases a modified locust to hopefully kill them all off. You know, I might have released like a smattering of them. Like, I don't know, could be a good idea. They've now like jumped continents, so. The more the merrier. And of course, to end it off, it's gonna pull back to the dinosaur question. Like how they're integrating into the world, what are they gonna do with them? So exactly where we started. In reality, we would just round them all up and put them in a sanctuary or kill them. Like if an entire cargo shipment of tigers somehow broke out into Massachusetts, do you think we'd just be like, well, that's where they belong now, life finds a way. So it just feels weird. Like again, some of that is definitely a me thing, but it just causes feelings of depression. I like it when the displaced by millions of years cloned dinosaurs are just chilling in their own little dinosaurs and then we fuck around and find out. And yeah, the island that Biosyn was on is still an active sanctuary for them, but the dinosaurs are somehow just making their way all around the world. We've got like triceratops wandering with elephants. Guaranteed that people are still getting jumped on the streets. But as far as I'm aware, this is the last one of this particular trilogy and they're gonna take some kind of sizable break. And you know what? Overall, still didn't hate it. Fun popcorn flick did not make me wanna die out of 10. Ratings wise, I'm floating around like a 2.5 to a three. If I just go based on how much more I enjoyed it compared to Fallen Kingdom, it, it gets the three. But if I start to think too hard about what the movie actually is and what it's doing, I, I would have to drop it down to a two. But that is gonna do it for this video. If you've seen the movie, what did you think of it? Do you think I'm crazy and being like way too kind for it? Just let me know how you're feeling down below. So thank you all so much for watching. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave a like on the video if you're into that kind of thing. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm mostly okay and we'll catch you all later.